So I've been helping people get into medical school now for about 13 years. The cases that I find the most interesting are the ones who have had a few failed attempts and then they come to us for help with their application and then after all those failed attempts, we get them in the first time with us. We've gathered a lot of data over those years. So what I'm gonna talk about today is the seven common mistakes that people make when applying to medical school and how you can avoid them to be successful with your application. In no particular order, the first mistake that I see people make is choosing the wrong medical schools. Your application has a wide variety of strengths and weaknesses, things that you've done well in, things that you experienced at, and just really areas that you shine in. Now, what people often do is either don't research enough or just don't really understand what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, and which universities those are suited to. If you want a really good guide that's gonna help you with that, um, there's a video that I do here, which I talk about how to choose your medical school, and on the website, there's also a free PDF guide that's gonna help you. So that will get you some of the way, but as I say, people really underestimate this. A lot of people spend so much time on personal statement, gaining the right work experience, all the other elements of the med school application that make it really strong. And then they miss the key step, which is choosing something that is suited to them. I, with my students, I spend hours on this. We sit down for a long time and really dissect everything about their application because it will be one of the biggest factors as to whether you are successful or not, or unsuccessful with your application. If you want to find out what those important important factors are. Check out this video here where I go through really what I would identify as the five key steps to building a really strong application. Another mistake I see people make is not looking at the application as a whole. There are certain elements that you need to build a really strong application. I always say to students you need a good year of preparation before you submit your application to make sure that you're building a strong foundation because the way that I think about teaching my students is that I from day one I'm getting them interview ready. What we're seeing a lot now is people who are applying and think it's just about the UCAT, get a good UCAT score, I'll get in front of the interview panel and then uh, that, that's it, that's all I need to worry about. But what might happen in that circumstance is that they will get four interviews and not a single offer and that is something that I'm seeing more increasingly commonly lately is people coming to me for that second second attempt after having a first attempt exactly like that where they thought all I need to do is get that high score but then they'll get in front of the interview panel and they haven't completed the steps before or built a solid foundation and then don't get past it and that's really uh, like very frustrating and a waste of time for a lot of people. What I say to my students is that Part one is to get you in front of the interview panel, but then part two is to get you past your interview and get you an offer. That part two is something that you have built up over your months and years of building experience. It's not something that you just cram for two weeks before your interview and hope that you get through the interview panel. It's the difference between being the real deal and just being the best applicant that you can be to be really strong and get through that entire process. Another common mistake I see people make is not getting enough help. We're in a situation today where where the med school application is the most competitive it's ever been. And the reality is that everybody is getting help. It's just to what degrees and to what level of quality they are achieving so. And schools, although they're trying their best, they don't quite deliver the level of depth that's needed. Any of my students on my program that um, have schools that are helping them with the med school application, you know, it's incomparable the difference between the two. You really need somebody who knows what they're talking about, knows the application inside out, and then will give you exactly what you need to just know what to focus on, what not to worry about too much, and just really be focused and time efficient so that you can dedicate the right kind of effort in the right kind of places to build the strongest application possible. Any year, any given number of people applying, 20% of those people will be reapplying, i.e. submitting an application for the second, third, even more times than that. The next mistake I see very often touches on one that we talked about before, but it's underestimating interviews. Interviews are the final hurdle to get you over the line. And and you really need to make sure that you've done the right amount of prep for it. This is the bit where we are the most militant about training our students and we do lots of in-person marks, online marks, just make sure that people are super well drilled to make sure they perform well. The thing that people underestimate or get caught out on is that they have really not put themselves and simulated the pressure of what an interview is like. And they think that just because they've practiced answers a few times that that is enough. But really, when you are in the real scenario, 
it is very different and it feels different and there's a lot of pressure that you just have to get used to dealing with. So if you do the right amount of preparation, have the right sort of baseline knowledge, you're not just trying to regurgitate answers and, and kind of be rehearsed, you are the real deal that is going to have the knowledge, have the experience and have everything about you prepared so that you come across as the real deal and the kind of person that deserves to and is going to go on to be a great doctor. Another mistake I see people make is careless errors. So it could be things like writing your personal statement and not checking the grammar properly or making careless spelling mistakes. And those are the kind of things that people will see and possibly just chuck your application straight in the bin for making them. The trick for that is to get people to check it and have people in your corner that are going to look at it, make sure that it's all okay. And sometimes you don't pick up on little typos because you know what you've written so you don't see them sometimes. So just having a second pair of eyes to help you with that sort of thing. Also, not being careless about timings. I've had students come to me for help because they have got the UCAS deadline wrong or they've not put their UCAT in time. So these are stupid things that if you just make sure you're a little bit on the ball and are keeping up to date with what's going on, you can avoid these careless mistakes. If you want to stay on the ball, I would recommend that you sign up to my newsletter, which is on my website, which I'll link to in the description below. Or actually, if you just subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications, every important step of the med school application, I'm putting out now twice weekly videos so that you can just stay up to date and know what's coming at the time it's coming so that you don't miss anything about the important dates in the med school application. The next common mistake I see people make is not acquiring enough experience. This will come to the fore when you write your personal statement, when you sit the SJT of the UCAT, but particularly when you come to interview. Having really good experience is probably the best thing that got me through interviews when it came to medical school uh, from when I was applying. Because what I did was I had a job working in hospital in the year running up to my med school application. So by the time I got to interview, I was probably about 18 months into uh, being on the wards all the time, regularly seeing patients. And the thing with that is that it gives you the experience for those questions that you can't practice for. Inevitably, when you come to your med school interviews, you will be asked something that is kind of a curveball that you just, even if you'd have been preparing and revising for two years for the interview, you still wouldn't have thought to come up with an answer for that question. You would have never imagined it because it's inevitably going to happen. Now, the way that you respond to that will fall back on your experience. When I got those questions and I got backed into a corner, I just remembered some real life things that had happened recently and they were just at my fingertips because I, like I say, was the real deal, had that experience. Rather than when you see people who are blagging it, they will take their one or two experiences that they have and will try and crowbar them into every type of scenario, question, whatever it is. That's They will just use that and dine out on that one experience for uh, all of their application. If you want to find out how to get really great work experience, check out this video here that's gonna kind of help you lay the foundation for everything. And the final mistake I see people make is not preparing adequately for the aptitude tests, particularly the UCAT because it is a very tricky exam and it's something that is unusual for people because it's probably the first time they have sat a skills-based exam rather than knowledge, a knowledge-based exam. The UCAT is a set of brain teasers, problems to solve, written entries that you have to pick answers out of, and it's a skill that you have to do on demand. It's really important to distinguish that from your maybe your A-levels, GCSEs, maybe even your degree, where it's all knowledge-based. Preparing for that in the right way and getting the right kind of score is really, really important. Now, I recommend that you check out this video here to give you the best plan for the UCAT, but we have videos for the exact same for how to prepare for the BMAT and the GAMSAT as well. And it's just really important that you have a really robust plan. And then once you've got that aptitude test score, it's really important what you do with it. Again, this comes back to university selection and making sure that you are choosing the right ones and that UCAT score is a piece of the puzzle that is gonna help you select which one you are going to go for. A lot of people think that if they have a low UCAT score that it's game over, but there are actually still options and we have had many students come to us who've come for help because they've got a low UCAT score and still managed to get them into a medical school that they were happy with because it's, again, 
part of the larger process. So you really have to think about that. But if, you, if you've got a low UCAT score and you're not sure what to do, check out this video here where it tells you exactly what to do in the circumstance that you didn't get the UCAT score that you were hoping for. So I hope you can see now what common mistakes you can avoid to make sure that your med school application is successful. Here are the areas that you really should focus on and check out this video where we talk about really what are the five important things that you need to nail to make sure that you do submit a really fantastic med school application. So thank you for watching and I will see you over in that video.